night and day. You know, these were the colors he was wearing when he won the Heisman Trophy. I don't know I did a good job when it looks like you can just dive into this paper. This thing makes 627 horsepower and 586 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing's going to be a tire shredder for sure. The old school 1934 Buick. And, yeah, a lot more power and a lot more reliability. So we got us a little situation here. The new old school. What? Oh, yeah. This is very quickly becoming one of my favorite cars. Whoa, we <laughs> I'm Bill Carlton. I built my first truck when I was 16. And ever since, me and my guys have been out here creating with our hands. Building the biggest, lowest, baddest custom trucks and cars in the game. People don't come here for what they need. They come here for what they want. This is Texas Metal. Let's stop lifting it up. Well, that hasn't been separated in a long time, huh? Looks good. Everything. Roll it out. Yep, let's go. Right. We're known for custom trucks, but you know, whatever rolls through the door, we're gonna get our hands on and give the little extensive touch to it. And when we're building a 49 Cadillac for NFL Hall of Famer Earl Campbell, I mean, this guy is a living legend. So everybody in the shop's gotta be on point and make sure this thing's gonna be perfect. You know, this car is special. And I'll say that about all of them, but this one's is definitely special. I think it's your turn, buddy, the finisher. Uh, I appreciate it, man. It's been months of metal work and body work just to get to this point. You know, when, when people see all the custom touches that are all throughout this car, they're going to know it's Earl Campbell's. You know, it's always a little bonus in the day when you get something major done, like just pulling the frame out, getting it cleaned up, getting it loaded off the powder coat. It's just a huge accomplishment. You know, considering how Earl's car came in to what it is now, finally feels like we're getting something done. Thank you. Well, and this thing is going to be a cool car. Earl, where's the first place you're going to take this car? In Austin, Texas, there's a little hamburger joint. Been there since the 40s. That's okay. the spot. I hang out there. That's where that's the cars the meet on uh, Thursday night. So that's going to be. You make me hungry. Yeah. I know. What's for lunch, burgers? <laughs> Earl, man, I'd really like to take you in the shop and show this thing to you at the stage it's at, but you've seen it in pieces enough. If you can bear with me, just wait just a little longer, I promise you it's going to be extra special for you to see this thing totally finished. I can't wait, Bill. For the most part, Earl's just been leaving the design for the caddy to us. But, you know, Earl called me a couple days ago, said he had some ideas for that, the color accents for the interior. I'm going to tell you, man, I can't wait to see it. But when I was coming through town, I brought you some of UT that I like that interior to look like. This is the real UT orange, what I used to wear when I was in college. And now, I don't need a number 20 on the leather, but everything else I would love for the inside to look like that. So you don't want just us to get material to match this color. You actually want to use the I UT want that jersey. UT jersey, that orange. Heck in yeah. the car. In the car. I got to have that orange in it. Man, that's pretty cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. You know, building a custom car, you always want to have those little custom touches all throughout. When you're building a car for Earl Campbell, you really want those touches to stand out. And putting these jerseys in the interior, this is definitely the way to go. Everybody's going to know who their car it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, a junior high football player getting promoted to the boss. Cars and trucks around, but this is, is by far probably my definitely my favorite one. A 49 Caddy. Yes, with sir. With orange interior in it. That's going to be great. Man, yeah. we're going to make it happen. You got it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Shock me. Knock me out of my socks, but I'm ready. All right. How's she looking? It's looking real, real good. Considering, you know, where it's at now and where it started with, <laughs> night and day. 
repairing the rust on this thing, rebuilding the floor, you know, drive shaft tunnel, transmission tunnel, building this car to the new chassis, to the new suspension, to the new engine, the LSX under the hood, man, this is gonna be cool. Just the hours that are in this area, much less the rest of the car. You know, there's definitely a lot of custom modifications to this thing, you know, especially the firewall. You know, John Vega got in there, did his metal work to really get this thing looking like a car. When Earl pops a hood on this thing, man, he's gonna be so impressed. For the new LSX, we're making custom intakes and exhaust, and it's wheels, tires, and brakes. As soon as we get this thing painted, we're gonna get it over to interior for custom door panels, seats, console, and headliner. The stereo that's going in this thing, all the little custom accents. You know what you get? 49 custom Cadillacs, that's what you get. <laughs> you know, the only thing left to do is just paint it and and then everything else. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with just the paint. Let's get it in the booth. Let's get it pushed in there. All right, man. You got this? Got this. You know, one of the things Earl wanted from the very beginning is black paint. And Chris is getting that thing going now. We are going to make sure that we get enough paint on this car that any any imperfections or whatever, we want them to be covered. We'll put as many coats as it takes to get this car as black as possible. I met Bill back when we were, man, in our teens. We were in a truck club uh, here in Houston, and he started doing air suspension. He did some, some work on one of my trucks a long time ago, I think when I was 18 years old. I had a buddy of mine teach me how to paint. I did it for 15 years straight, and it's fun to do. I, I enjoy it. I grew up watching Earl Campbell play football, and, you know, people are going to see this car, and whoever knows it and who don't know it, at least I'll know I painted it. I'll know I did a good job when I can tell that it looks like you can just dive into this paint job because the color is going to look so deep. Okay, we got our Cadillac out of the booth, and now that it's, it's painted and cleared, the next process is wet sanding and buffing. It has an orange peel texture, kind of leathery looking. That's why they call it orange peel. It looks like the peel of an orange. What we want to do is sand this down with our blocks of different sandpapers, get it slick as possible, and then we're going to come back and buff it to give it that nice mirror finish. The guys did such a good job on this firewall doing the bead rolling on it that I can't use this block on because it will burn the paint. When I say burn it, I mean sand through the paint. We have real problems if I do that. We'll block the flat areas with this block and sandpaper, and then we'll have to come back by hand and get around all the bead rolls with finer grit sandpaper. In doing this by hand, I can fill the edges more. I know where I, I can and can't go because, like I said, we do not want to burn this paint at this stage in the game. OK, this is our last step in our wet sanding process. We've got 3,000 grit sandpaper on our DA sander. We'll run over this real quick, and then we'll be ready to buff. And when we start buffing, that's what's going to bring out that mirror shine that we're looking for. You have to spend the time on it to make it as slick and smooth as possible, or when this thing's buffed, you'll be able to see. We did the wet sanding, buffing, and polishing part of our firewall here, which is the final step in a paint job. The only thing we got left now is to do the whole rest of the car. Most of the guys working here have spent their whole lives in Houston. John, you know, he's a lifer too. He just couldn't wait to get going on the interior. Because for guys like us, you know, Earl's just a local legend. I'm getting ready to start the door panels and the interior on Earl's caddy here. So what I've done is I've just laid out some templates on the doors and the panels all the way in. I got me a pencil, good eraser. We just sit here and figure out what we're going to make here and try to get everything incorporated in all at one time and get everything drawn out so we'll see the whole design before we ever even start making the first piece. We got the basic sketch down of where we're headed to, so now it's just a matter of how do we get UT in here? We don't want to make it overpowering. It needs to stay kind of subtle and just an accent in the car. So what we might do is put some sort of insert spot behind that. A, that might work. After looking at the placement of where I've got this armrest in relation to the seat, it's going to have to move up. So I'm not really happy with the shape that I have of the armrest. So this is how these things work. You just sit here and stare at them and think about it a little while, and it'll come to you. It'll all make sense. And so I like to just sit here early in the morning, quietly, enjoy my coffee, 
and sketch. So all I gotta do is just lift it up and stick it to another piece of board. We just stick that down. I'll take an off knife, cut that out. And that'll give me my template to work with so I can put this wherever I want it out on here. So what I'm thinking here is armrest just needs to move up to about right there. That looks good. I like where we're headed with this. Even though there was assembly lines back when Earl's 1949 Cadillac was made, you know, a lot of stuff was made by hand. There wasn't any robots. And we're taking the same approach from the metalwork to the interior. You know, Earl showed up the other day, brought in some jerseys, wanted us to work these into the car somehow. So my thought here is to take and use those to create that Cadillac V and drop that in right here underneath these pillows. That would look really cool. Just a nice pop of that burnt orange in the car without being too overwhelming. Probably turn out looking really cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out the rest of the seams on the seat. I'm going to start laying out the bolt. Make sure I have everything lined up. I want the lines exactly where I want them. In the center, what we're going to do is we're going to draw out a two-inch tuck and roll. It's just something that was used classically back in the hot rod days. It's basically they take and they, they roll the leather over and you tuck it in with some foam that actually makes these pillow tops. Just kind of keep with the old school feeling of the 49 Cadillac. And then we'll have that modern touch of this nice, hard, solid, shaped out pillow on the top of here that still has that lean to the classic styles. All right. You know, everything in here has got a nice flow. We still got that classic feel to it with the tuck and roll. I think that's a little pop of orange up here in the top for these Vs is going to be just what we're looking for in these seats. Get these things out, get them into the trim shop, and we'll get them covered. We put the old school 1934 Buick Model 57 on hold because the owner wanted to figure out what kind of power plant he wanted to use. He ended up with the late model 5.3, and now we're back at it. Got it, huh? Got it. This is perfect for this old Buick. It always sucks to see a project get pulled off the lift, but I'm glad he made up his mind exactly what he wanted. Now we can move forward with the rest of the car. I wasn't really feeling taking this thing apart. It was so <laughs> pristine, you know, so original. You know, it was hard to, to cut into it, but we pulled out the stock straight eight motor. Gosh, you know, get the steering all mocked up. I mean, this thing's gonna be a new car all underneath once we're done, you know, especially with the new 5.3. It just had to have a new motor and transmission in it. Exactly, man. Power, reliability. He'll never have to worry about this for sure. I can't wait to see this thing come together. It's going to be a really, really nice old school. The new old school. The new old school. Freezing cold out here today, and we're about to go drop the LS into the Buick. The old school straight eight was big, but narrow. You know, the new 5.3 is a lot wider than the straight eight. So once little one gets this thing in, we have to mock up a new steering configuration. All right, just make sure that it doesn't hit the headlight or the paint. OK. Go ahead. In? Yeah. So this thing is pretty dirty, but <laughs> when we're done with this, it's going to look spotless. Come in. Slowly, slowly. Watch the front bumper. Yeah. All right, we clear? Yeah. Now, if we get that angle under it, then we need one more in the front, and then we can go ahead and start moving it around. There we go. That looks pretty good. Fully on its own in the car. The steering has to be moved now, too. You know, the owner still wants to keep as much of that original interior as possible, so we're trying to keep the old steering column. The key to work on these beautiful cars is you got to do yoga at least once a week. Since I can't cut right outside on the firewall, we got to take the ignition off, release the column, and pull it out without damaging this nice, beautiful interior. Yeah. Beep, beep. Nice. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> got it out. Cool, man. You know, yeah. keeping the old column just fit the whole original interior in this is definitely the way to go about it. There's a problem with that, though. We don't have any way to adapt the original column to the rack and pinion that we're going to put underneath there. So we have an end of an old column. I want to graft this on to the original one. All right. That way we can adapt all this right to the rack and pinion, and everything will work right. Right. You know where to cut. Got it. Quick, easy, right? No. This just goes to show you there's 
something that wasn't even thought of when we set out to do this little project. But, you know, that's just what we do. We deal with them, keep on rolling. Got that. After piece after piece, and they're all going to fit in perfect. Now it's time to put all the pieces together and make this custom 1934-2020 steering column. So this is not our finished product until it gets painted and fully installed, but now we're ready to mock up our rack and pinion. I got to wash my hands, because I do not want to get this interior dirty. A while ago, we were sticking all the way here, almost touching the header. Now we're right at the firewall, exactly where we measured, exactly where we wanted it to be. From here, we can pivot around it, and we can go straight into our rack and pinion that's going to end up being up there in the front. Rainy <laughs> measuring tape. <laughs> So we got us a little situation here. Our rack is way up there in front, like almost a foot in front of the engine. And with our column coming out like right behind the cylinder head, we need to detour our steering shaft around the exhaust header and then go back straight to the rack. So we have to make us like a tent on a heim joint. We gotta get this thing as close as possible to the header without touching. That way it doesn't put this U joint in so much of an angle, which is gonna cause hard spots in your steering. We have three U joints. There's nothing to hold it in the middle. We gotta support it with this Heim joint. And what this is gonna do is hold this shaft in the center from moving around and hitting the headers and keep it off the frame as well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this to the chassis. That way it'll support this from moving around. We got everything in place. Now we're ready to give this a rotation. Check it out. Man, this steers pretty good. I don't feel any hard spots. I think we got this set up pretty, pretty good. Now we definitely know this car's gonna steer in the right direction. You're definitely not gonna make a lot of new friends with the Buick crowd cutting into this original 34 Buick. Straight up. But we're still doing what we can to give this thing the respect it deserves. I have Edgar color matching the engine to the cab, and Matt's adding a super clean serpentine setup. So now we got our motor in here. We're gonna go ahead and start getting the thing that gets the motor running. So with this bracket here, it holds the water pump, the alternator, power steering pump. It allows everything to be more compact and gives us a lot more clearance, especially when a car like this is, we barely have any clearance in the engine bay, so it tightens everything up and, and gives it a nice look also. Now that we got our bracket on, we'll go ahead and mount our power steering pump up. We're still real tight on clearance, but it fits, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Now it's lean, mean, and ready to be seen. Got it. Yes, man. Definitely a big improvement from what was in it. A lot more power and a lot more reliability. And it kind of looks like it belongs. Yeah, it just looks right at home in this thing. Man, Matt, it's all downhill now, huh? Yes, sir. You know, there's so much room on the back seat of this 49 Cadillac that John has plenty of space to come up with a couple of one-off speaker enclosures. So what I'm going to do to take up this space here is I'm going to use it as a subwoofer. I'm fired into the pocket over here, get a little back pressure loaded on the front of the subwoofer. It'll improve the sound a little bit. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'll start with the baffle of the box and work up from there. Once I have that piece made, I can take that and I start building the walls of the box up and around and get the shape to it that I'm looking for. Figure out how we're going to go about tying this whole big piece together. And start with the back wall that needs to be curved. Basically just cutting it every quarter of an inch almost all the way through, and that'll allow it to bend and shape to the fender well just fine. So once I get my angle cut on it, I can go put it in the car and get it stuck. 
This enclosure is a little different than most of the enclosures that we build around here. It will actually become the interior trim panel of the cart. It will make a top piece that comes out, but it won't come out all the way. It's only, it'll stop shy over here with some shape in it, and we'll bring it all back into here to go down. And this will turn into your armrest area up here. So when you're sitting in the back seat, you're in an armrest here, and this will all sculpt down towards the seat. In order for this material to make the shape that I want, I've made these ribs, and we'll put them around in a couple of places, and that'll give us something to attach our material. fiberglassing. I'm just gonna take a piece of this flex form carpet we want. We'll get it stapled down. It should be perfect. Now that we got that worked out, next thing we'll do is take some fiberglass resin, start piling it on here in this carpet. And then we'll wait for it to get dry enough to touch so we don't get it all over the car. Once it's to that point, we're gonna put it back in the car, continue building our panels around it, get everything tied in. When you're building your custom panels like this, you want to make sure that you keep everything in consideration, keep things nice and tight, so you have one nice cohesive flow through your entire panel. Edgar painted the new LSX for Earl's 49 Cadillac. And of course, it's Texas Longhorn Orange. And we got our custom chassis back from Powder Coat. We're putting it all together with brand new airlines, brand new brake lines, all new stainless bolts, and of course, brand new billet wheels. Kind of looks like a car now. Yeah. Looks good with four wheels on it. Man, now you can actually see how the contrast is coming together. A little pop of the motor color is going to tie into a little bit of interior color. It's going to put the whole car complete package. Man, this car is fit for Earl Campbell. Definitely. I hope he'll let me borrow it one day. <laughs> <laughs> when you're getting the body ready to put it on the frame. And this, man, it just, it gets me excited. This is very quickly becoming one of my favorite cars. Badass 49 Caddy is about to be born today. I shall be liking that chassis because you should probably set it down on there, huh? Yeah. Looking good. It looks real good. You know, these were the colors he was wearing when he won the Heisman Trophy. He's got to love this, right? Right. Man, especially being his first custom car. I'd be happy with this, my 100th custom car. <laughs>
use that 90 degree angle and it should put our pitch right exactly where we're wanting. So now that we have all of our tubes cut, you can kind of see the direction we were talking about in the beginning, where we wanted our placement of our air filters. And now that we have it with the tape kind of securing the two tubes in place, we can get it pulled off and go weld it up. So on this tube here, I'm gonna end up welding it clockwise, coming around this way. And on this tube here, I'm gonna come counterclockwise. It's gonna give it one of those little small details that most people wouldn't notice, but you know, to the ones that do, they'll appreciate it. So we're gonna go test fit them on the caddy, see how they look. If everything looks good, we can go ahead and pull them off and polish them. So now that we got everything wrapped up, everything's installed, see everything fits like we want it, uh, I think Earl will be real happy with this when he sees it. After a lot of hard work and some tough decisions, this 1934 Buick's finally done. You know, I was really reluctant about cutting out all the old factory suspension, but once we got into it, that's what we do. Bill called me and said the car was ready to come and look at it. So, uh, you know, I invited the guys, the Soberanos Car Clubs of Houston. All my friends are here, their cars are here. We're all excited to look at the Buick. What's going on, man? See you, man. Javier, how you doing, man? Yeah, good, good to see good. you. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up? You got the old crew out, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, after looking at your whole crew's cars, I can definitely see why you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Oh, yeah, man. I got to keep up with them, so. Yeah. yeah. Your Buick now, it'll definitely fit in with the crowd, for sure. Oh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to see it. What? Hell, man. Man, she looks pretty. Whoa. Damn, bro. Oh, my god. Good deal, man. Awesome. All right, man. Good job, man. Thank you, man. Man, what you think about that thing? Man, it looks good. Beautiful. I love the way it looks, the stance, yeah. the wheels. You know, first things first, we got this thing on the lift and just started fresh with a new rear end, built independent front suspension for it with all air all the way around. All that right. thing's gonna ride good, handle good, and be reliable for sure. Now you know why I'd ask you to do what I want to do, right? You know, Javier, I gotta admit, once this thing's down on the ground like that, man, it changes the whole look. Yeah. Definitely made the right decision for sure. Yeah. One other thing you wanted was the reliability and some power under the hood, right? Right. Let's check out under the hood. Oh, what? Man, that looks good. How'd you fit that thing in there? Started out ripping that old engine and trans out and just getting a pull-out 5.3, stripping it all down. Really dressed it up, make it look good. So when you pop the hood, you got something to be proud of. Man, wonderful. It was tough, but definitely worth it. We had to do a vintage air front runner kit to kind of tighten all the pulley system up because there's such a narrow frame in it. We had to custom make all the steering to get around the headers. The old engine looked like an antique. This is state of the art. This car went from being real cool to real gangster. You probably got 10 times the power yeah. that this thing came with. <laughs> we'll see if you can keep some tread on these old cokers here. All right, can't wait. <laughs> Taking a late model engine, sticking in such an antique car, you'd think it'd probably stick out. But all the work we put into this engine, making it look the way it does, it's like it was made for this car. What do you guys think, man? You gonna let this guy cruise around with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so happy now that I can just get in this car, start it up, and show it off. Thanks a lot, man. You're welcome, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it, yeah. All right. You know, sometimes in this business, you really gotta lean on your guys. You know, on the caddy, we really had to lean on John. You know, he's really coming through. Every little detail he's adding is 100. We get started on the rear deck for the 49 caddy. We're gonna start by cutting out our base out of MDF. We'll take that over to the car, get that in place, and start building it up from there. The back deck has a curve in it, so we'll make two pieces. I'm gonna take some fiber all here and mix it up and use that to actually put these two pieces together. I wanna make sure we get a good bond on this, especially with it being up here in the rear deck of the car. You know, that's, it takes a lot of heat up here. We want something that's really gonna be able to stand up and not give us this will be the riser that'll come up from the rear deck that helps tie it into the back of the seats all right we got this thing all dried up positioned ready to go so i'm gonna pop this thing out take it across the way put it on the table and we'll finish it out there You know, Earl Camel's 49 Cadillac is just one of those builds where we're just making as many parts as we can by hand. Ryan's finishing up the custom exhaust on one side. Now he's mirror imaging it to the other. 
The first side is always the easiest. Marrying it is the hardest part about it. It's just a lot of marking, fine tuning, a bunch of small cuts until you get that final exact perfect fit that we're looking for. And you know, just, it's easier to cut a little bit at a time than cut a whole bunch and then have to either add or go find another piece and start all over again. The reason I'm putting the V-band here is because the muffler and all that, all the way to the header is all one piece right now. If we ever need to service this, we can take it off in different sections rather than one full piece. Houston, 40 degrees in the morning, 80 degrees at lunch. Now, this point of the exhaust is the most complex, but I had to work with and just the limited amount of space. So trying to make this work and flow and not cause any restriction and also clear everything is pretty tricky, but hopefully I can get exactly what I'm looking for out of this and make it go all the way and dump out the back instead of stopping right here. All right, so I didn't let it beat me. We were able to make it come all the way out to the back. That's gonna look tight from the back. Whenever you're driving behind it, see that? That's gonna look dope. So now all we got left to do is just make some hangers, drill some O2 bungs, weld it all up, and throw it back in the car. I think if Earl ever gets to take a look underneath this car, he should be very happy. I know I am. What's up, man? What's going on, Bill? On this build, there was a lot of parts had to get chromed, but that grill, you know, that grill is something special. We had to make sure this thing shined. You got something for me? Oh, yeah, I got something for you, buddy. I got your grill. Man, that thing looks good, Victor. It's a 1949 Cadillac. You know, most people think you just dip this thing in chrome, but... Yeah, I mean, they say, well, you do it in 30, <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> nah, right. nah, nah. You had to take the whole thing apart, huh? The whole thing apart? Yeah. Okay, these five pieces right here, they're made of uh, stainless steel. So you got to be careful with them, you know, when you polish them and chrome plate them. Reflection. You look down here, you see everything up here. Yeah, so up everything there. back here has to look just as just good. Just like that. This thing's pretty much a mirror now. Yeah. Victor, you sure this is the same one? The same one, buddy. This thing looks brand new. I think it's better new. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Man, I appreciate it, Victor. It's all yours, buddy. Let's be careful now. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, a ton of interior work's been done to this 49 Cadillac, but there's still a ton more to go. You know, John's got his work cut out for him, building custom speaker pods, cup holders, and pockets. Man, these door panels are gonna be cool. So now that I got the speaker pod and cup holder pocket all ground out in shape, the next component that I need to finish for the door panel is the armrest. So I'll just take my template here, just gonna trace it out. I'll come in and rough cut it, and we'll route it. All right, got them all cut out. Next step to do, sand them down, glue them up, and then stack them together. You know, anytime you're building anything custom, you just kind of come up with ideas in your head and then think of ways to execute your ideas. You know, the stacking method here, it's basically just to get a big chunk to carve out of, as you would any other sculpture, really. So the next thing you got to do is got to put the hand pull in this thing. I've got a template here, so I'll have it for both sides, trace it out so we have some place to put fingers, grab a hold of it, and close it. You know, Earl came in the other day, he had a challenge. He really wants to get this UT burnt orange color in the car. We're gonna take this, cut it up, and wrap a few pieces. That will work. This is where all that body working and sanding really starts to pay off. You can actually start to see what you've made and see the final product. Everything starts to come together. You can see all your lines, your details. And if you don't put all that time and effort into it, when you get to this point, it'll start to show too. All right, well, that's a wrap. Only thing left to do now is get it on the car and get the speakers in it and get everything buttoned up and this thing be ready to roll. I love working on Cadillacs because that's just the car of the industry. It's one of those cool cars that was always fun to customize, you know, because you had to take that extra care with them because they were the luxury of the time. Cadillac rolls in here. We're all fighting to work, to um, work on it. I hope I get to work on it. I hope I get to work on it. John knows with that Cadillac, he can put 15 speakers in the trunk. And you know you can make it as low as you want and make it go as fast as you want. Mm -hmm. I just want to be the porter and drive around the parking lot. I mean, that's <laughs> what I want to do. <laughs> of course, we did the 59 for Slim. We cut the roof off and made it a Roadster. Night and day difference. Yeah, in that just back out, right. moving seats that far back to make room for That's him. one thing Cadillacs always had, is plenty, plenty of room. room. Nothing said America like Cadillac. Cadillac. As American as 
you know, apple pie. They'll keep making them, we'll keep customizing them, people keep eating them. <laughs> <laughs>
That's right. 34, you were a Houston Oiler, and in 91, you went to the Hall of Fame. That's right. There's no doubt everything in this car says Earl Campbell. I mean, they, they went out of their way and be young. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. Oh, man. <laughs> Good three. Yes, sir. When you see that 49 Caddy sitting up, that's one thing. But when you see it go down all the way in the grass, that's bad. You you got a 49 after that. We uh, try to make this thing as comfortable and as cool for you as possible. Mm -hmm. It's got 24 by 9s in the front and 22 by 12s in the rear. i never seen a rim like that before. That's the one of a kind. I love it. Oh, what a beautiful car. I like your car, man. I'm, I'm really happy it's mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy it's mine. <laughs> Thank y'all very much for what y'all done. You and your team should be very proud. Y'all did a great job. Man, appreciate that, man. The whole process from start to finish, you know, it took some time. It was a labor of love for every guy. I can't thank my guys enough. And this is just one more example of us just getting after it, getting it done, and just killing it.